Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Ender. Today I'm going to introduce to you two new stats, points per loss and efficiency rating. Find out which combos are the best in this category. Before we start, I would like to give a shout out to our new channel members. Thank you and I really appreciate your support. If you are not yet a member, please consider becoming one so that you can gain early access to my contents like stats update video and members only posts where I show more specific statistics and analytics. It's almost 2 months since our last update and we have added a lot of tournaments to our databank. From the Japanese scene, we added 12 S1 tournaments, 5 G3s, 2 G2s, and 1 Grand Prix. We also added tournaments from Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, Thailand, Turkey, California, and Arizona. You can find all the links in the description below. This is the 6th update, but unlike our previous ones, this time I'm going to introduce two new stats, the points per loss and the efficiency rating. When I started this video series, my goal was to introduce to you different stats to measure combos. I didn't want to overwhelm you in the beginning, so I started with just the three basic ones, win rates, points per win, and power rating. Now I'm adding two more in this video and another two in the next one. Let's start with points per loss. This is the opposite of PPW or points per win which you are already familiar with. If you are new to the channel, you can compute for the PPW by adding all the points that a combo gains and then dividing them by the number of wins. Note that you can get scores ranging from 1 to 3, so basically it is the average points that a combo gets whenever it wins. On the other hand, PPL or points per loss is the average points that a combo gives to your opponent whenever it loses. You compute by adding all the points lost or given to your opponent and then divide it by the number of losses. The lower the PPL is, the better the combo. So here is the current top 10 combos based on PPL. At number 10, we have Shark Edge 460 Taper with 1.41 points per loss in 35 battles. Are you surprised that Shark Edge made it into the list? You'll be more surprised as I reveal the remaining combos. At 9th place, we have Shark Edge 380 Low Flat with 1.40 points per loss in 42 battles. Another Shark Edge made it into the list and I will explain later the pattern in this list. At number 8, we have Wizard Arrow 460 Flat with 1.38 points per loss in 32 battles. This is a unique combination of a stamina blade and an aggressive beat. I hope we get more data on this combo since it only logged 32 battles. Number 7, we have Hell's Hammer 360 High Taper with 1.36 points per loss in 33 battles. We recently featured this combo but it didn't do well. At least it doesn't give much point whenever it loses. Number 6, we have Wizard Rod 160 Ball with 1.35 points per loss in 46 battles. This variant of Wizard Rod on Ball is becoming famous in Japan and it's weird that 160 is able to balance the combo. At 5th place, we have Grand Dagger 360 point with 1.35 points per loss in 80 battles. This Grand Dagger is not a popular choice but it sure is putting up some good stats not only in this category. You know it if you watch my previous updates. At 4th place, we have Nightlands 360 flat with 1.33 points per loss in 47 battles. This is another aggressive combo in an unpopular blade. Do you think Nightlands is underrated? At 3rd place, we have Sphinx Cow 960 High Taper with 1.29 points per loss in 60 battles. Just like Hell's Hammer, this combo didn't do well in test battles. It has a low win rate but it loses mostly to spin finishes. At 2nd place, we have Phoenix Wing 160R with 1.21 points per loss in 43 battles. This is another combo that is becoming popular in Japan. It seems that 160 is providing a little bit of critical chance and having a low PPL is like having a good dodge rate. At first place, we have Grandbuster 560 Gear Point with 1.16 points per loss in 52 battles. When Grandbuster was first released, some say it wasn't good. It looks like it just needs more time to master it because some were quick to judge it on day 1. If 10 combos are not enough for you, here is an expanded stat sheet of the 20 combos that excels in points per loss. 
you will notice here that most of them are on aggressive beats. This means that dodging is a real thing in Beyblade decks because if you think about it, moving targets are harder to knock out which causes them to usually lose via spin finish that's why they have lower PPL in general. On the other hand, I will show you the 20 combos that currently have the worst PPL and I believe that you will notice what's common among them. Most of the combos here are on beats that are stable and usually camps at the center of the stadium. Since they usually sit there at the middle, it makes them more vulnerable to attacks that can knock them out. My gathered data will also prove to you the balance in this game. You should notice by now that those stamina combos may have higher win rates but they are also those that loses more points whenever they lose. Meanwhile, attack combos may have lower win rates but they are the ones who doesn't give that much points whenever they lose. Aggressive players will just need to avoid self-KO if they want to be successful which can be done through practicing your launch and deciding when to risk a hard launch. Now that you know what points per lose and points per win are, it's time to learn about my efficiency rating which is based on those two stats. But before we proceed, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Help me grow this channel so that I can reach more people and help them understand Beyblade Dex gear sports on a deeper level. Consider becoming a channel member as a token to show your support. Channel members will gain access to perks like early access and exclusive community posts about my statistics and analytics. My efficiency rating is computed by the product of win rate and points per win minus the product of lose rate and points per loss. If you wanna know how efficient is the combo, you need to consider not only when it wins but also when it loses. Efficient combos will have positive values while inefficient combos will have negative values. You might have already noticed that on the PPL stat sheets that I have shown to you. So here are the top 10 combos with the highest efficiency rating. At number 10, we have Dragon Dagger 360 point with 36.25 efficiency rating in 80 battles. Aside from making it to the top 10 PPL, this combo also shows how efficient it is. At number 9, we have Dragon Sword 380 Taper with 36.25 efficiency rating in 80 battles. It's actually tied with Dragon Dagger and it's surprising to see that a suggested combo by Takara Tomi is so efficient. At 8th place, we have Phoenix Wing 960 point with 38.64 efficiency rating in 176 battles. This is one of the popular builds of Phoenix Wing and the efficiency proves why it is a popular choice. Number 7, we have Phoenix Wing 360 Taper with 41.11 efficiency rating in 90 battles. Another Phoenix Wing build and it is slightly more efficient than the point build. At 6th place, we have Hellsight 460 point with 42.86 efficiency rating in 42 battles. Hellsight is no longer the best option for ball so maybe it's time to look for another build because it's still one of the top blades. At number 5, we have Grandbuster 160 flat with 47.22 efficiency rating in 36 battles. It looks like less gears on the build is better on Grandbuster. Flat is doing better than Axel or this combo. At 4th place, we have Wizard Rod 370 Ball with 48.81 efficiency rating in 84 battles. Wizard Rod on Ball is currently dominating the meta and this variant is currently the most efficient one. At 3rd place, we have Grand Sword 360 Taper with 50.55 efficiency rating in 91 battles. You already saw the taller version at night spot, now this 360 taper build might be the best Grand Sword combo. At 2nd place, we have Phoenix Wing 160 Rush with 53.49 efficiency rating in 43 battles. This is a more aggressive build of Phoenix Wing compared to the other two on this list. This combo also made it in the top 10 PPL, so try it if you haven't yet. Now for our most efficient combo, we have Phoenix Wing 560 Orb with 56 efficiency rating in 50 battles. Again, another Phoenix Wing, but this time it is on Orb. It shows the versatility of the blade, and there are 4 in this list to choose from. Here is the stat sheet when expanded to the top 20 combos. We now have a good mix of aggressive and conservative combos. This means that any type of combo can be efficient as long as you know how to use them properly. Of course, there are meta parts that will stand out, and you will notice in this list that you can't go wrong with Phoenix Wing and Wizard Run. 
if there are efficient combos, there is also the other end of the list which are the inefficient ones. Basically, these are combos that you should avoid or you might need some more time to master it in order to make them work. Take note that all of my list has a minimum of 30 battles threshold and some combos, especially the new ones, need more data to make it on the list. Even those combos near the threshold might need more battles for us to get a better metrics. I'm continuously adding data to my spreadsheet and it just keeps on improving as we move forward. I hope more people will upload their tournaments with the proper combo labels or at least show them before each match, which I believe is the basics if you want to be a VTuber. I hope that this video will help you in choosing your combos when you go to tournaments. These are just two stats that you can use and there are other more in my previous videos so check them out. I will introduce another two new stats on my next video so stay tuned. After that, we will have a total of 7 metrics that can guide you. Let me know how much you like this video through the thumbs up button and by subscribing if you are new to the channel. Comment down any combos that you would like to know more and I will reply with their stats. Thank you so much for watching, everyone just keep on enjoying Beyblades and I will see you on my next video.